Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Wright, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for tuning into this latest video. I have a client here who attended with bilateral um, ear infections, so ear infections in both ears. We started off in the right ear and this infection was a fungal infection, also known as otomycosis. Um, the reason why we know it's a fungal infection is in a moment you'll see some fungal spores and you can see that at the base of the ear canal. So this ear canal is extremely inflamed, it's swollen and you can see just here these black um, fungal spores on the base of the ear canal and that's attached to some dead keratin skin. And another hallmark of otomycosis, so fungal infections, is the appearance of almost like a spider's web. You get this or like cotton wool fibres, and um, that's another hallmark of a fungal infection. This client has been suffering from chronic fungal infections for a while. Um, they normally have routine ENT appointments every six months, but due to the pandemic, they are getting cancelled at the moment. And the client heard about myself and decided to give me a call and have treatment um, clearance of his of his ears. So um, with his fungal Ear infection. He also develops a lot of debris infected um, pus, uh, which is normally quite medial, so deep in the ear against the eardrum. It was, it was almost completely deafened in this ear. The patient also has otitis externa, so an ear outer ear infection of the left ear. So we'll show you that procedure after the right, uh, but it wasn't fungal, it was more superficial, just more dry skin. You'll, you'll, you can compare the difference. So I've got the main occlusion out of the ear, so we can see the eardrum in the distance. Um, however, there is some infected debris on the eardrum itself and some dead keratin. You may have just noticed there that there, there's a lot of fogging and that happens when the ear canal temperature is raised and a hallmark of any form of infection is a raised temperature. So because the temperature of the ear canal is greater than the temperature of the endoscope, so the tip, we get condensation. So um, with all the humidity in the ear due to the infection, all that moisture is settling, is condensing on the lens of the endoscope. And after a couple of seconds, um, especially after I introduced the suction probe, it clears and we get a nice clear view again. So I've just attached the fine end and I'm just at the roof of the ear canal. Because the ear canal is heavily inflamed, it does restrict the maneuverability within the ear canal. It's not as wide as an average ear canal. And you, you will compare this gentleman's left ear after this procedure, you'll see how much more wider it is. The average ear canal diameter can vary. The ear canal geometry is like an American football, so it's like an oval or a rugby ball in the UK, whereby the height is greater than the width. There's so much variation between people's ear canals, but on average, you can say the height of an average ear canal is between 0.7-0.9 millimeters, um, and the width, sorry, I should say 7 to 9 millimeters, so just below a centimeter. And I think I made that same mistake the other day. I said 0.7 to 0.9. So I mean. Uh, seven millimeters to nine millimeters in height and the width can vary between I would say five millimeters um, to about seven millimeters in width and that can also vary as you enter the ear canal so generally speaking the ear canal uh, aperture near the aperture it's quite wide and then you get the second bend in the ear canal. And the second bend is where the bony part of the ear canal and the cartilaginous part of the ear canal meet. So that's about a centimeter into the ear canal. So the outer third of the ear canal is made up of cartilage. The inner two thirds is made up of bone. And at that juncture, you get a narrowing. We call that the isthmus. So we get a narrowing of the ear canal. And that region is near the jaw joint. So the temporomandibular joint um, so that's where the jaw is positioned in relation to the ear around that second um, bend about a centimetre into the ear canal and the ear canal is slightly above the jaw, uh, the temporomandibular jaw joint. Um, and then the ear canal again narrows about half a centimetre away from the eardrum. We get another narrowing called anithmus again, that's about half a centimetre away. 
So we're just using the fine end, I'm just delicately suctioning some of this discharge pus off the tympanic membrane, so the eardrum. And you can see here we've got uh, what appears to be some granulo um, granulation tissue. When you have an ear infection, um, as uh, the connective tissue um, begins to reheal, you get some granulation, granuloma tissue. You can get that on the eardrum um, and you can also get that on the ear canal. And the hallmark of granulation tissue is just a redness, a red swelling. And you can see that here uh, on the roof of the ear canal. So it's not actually on the eardrum, it's just away from the eardrum. And you, you'll see it again, it'll come in shot several times during the procedure. And that's a, some granulation tissue. Um, so the occlusion's gone. Uh, we've cleared the, the, the ear canal, so the patient can hear a lot better. So the eardrum itself uh, appears, it's not, a, it's, it's not your average looking eardrum, and again you'll compare the patient's left eardrum, which looks more healthy compared to the right. The eardrum is intact, uh, but it is isn't a bit dull. The landmarks, the usual landmarks we see on the eardrum, so the hammer bone, the malleus, uh, and the light reflex is absent. When you've got a more or less healthy eardrum, the light that we shine into the ear using an otoscope or uh, an endoscope in our, in our technique, it reflects back off the past tensor. So the past tensor is the main body of the eardrum, the bottom half. The very top part of the eardrum is called the past placida. That's the thinning of the eardrum right at the top. The past tensor is you've got some fibrous um, tissue, in the, uh, some strong fibrous tissues in the middle of the three membranes that consist of the eardrum. And because of the turgidness, we get a reflection back and uh, you get what we call a light reflex. So when you've got an absent light reflex, it doesn't always mean there's a problem with the patient's hearing or their eardrum or the middle ear, but when we do have the presence of a light reflex, you can be more or less certain. Uh, again, not 100%, I think it's ever 100% with ears but more often than not, the eardrum is healthy. So what I'm doing now, because this patient has got all this dead skin, and some of it is has got some fungal spores, the best chance of aiding this patient and um, stopping this fungal infection from resurfacing, as well as the patient receiving some medication, which I'll talk about in a moment, is to peel away as much dead skin as possible. So the rest of this procedure on the right is quite tedious, and I'm just trying to it's almost like an onion, we're trying to peel away layer after layer. We have to be see, quite gentle uh, because we are making contact with the canal wall. Now the outer third of the, the ear canal is cartilaginous, it's semi-sensitive so we can apply some pressure and the outer third, because it's made up of cartilage, is also quite flexible and malleable, whereas the inner two thirds, it's, it's very sensitive, more so when the patient is infected because it's tender and it's non-flexible because it's made up of bone. So we just have to be really careful. And you can see I'm just gently with a fine end, just hovering over this dead skin and just peeling it away towards the eardrum. Almost like mowing a lawn, I'm doing it in strips. I'm gonna come back out again and do another layer as much as I can, as safely as possible. So fungal infections are notoriously difficult to treat. Um, they are quite stubborn and they can be quite chronic. Um, so I, I, in the UK at least, I think uh, GPs, ENT, generally recommend the Caniston eardrops, they're prescriptions, so they're very good. Uh, so you can, children have that for thrush. So it's very good for fungal infections. Acetic acid, so in the, in the UK, we've got an over-the-counter version called ear calms. Sometimes um, it is known that acetic acid can also help with fungal infections. When you've got an outer ear canal infection, and before I continue, you can see the patient's got some granulation tissue here as well, so not all, all um, also near the eardrum, but just where I was a moment ago, at the top, the roof of the ear canal, you saw some granulation tissue that we removed actually. Um, uh, so where was I? I was talking about uh, retitis externa and acetic acid, that's it. In the UK, we use ear calm uh, over the counter. When you've got otitis externa, so an outer ear infection, so although this is a fungal infection, what we call uh, otomycosis, it's under the umbrella of otitis externa, which is just an umbrella term for an outer ear infection or inflammation. The pH of the ear turns from an acidic pH, that's the normal pH, around 5.4, 
above neutral, so uh, into an alkaline pH, so I think generally around 7.4, maybe a bit higher. And if we can re-acidify the ear, it can help treat the infection. So ear calm is acetic acid, I think it's a it's called a burrow solution, uh, it's very acidic, I think 3.4 uh, pH, and you use that and it can re-acidify the ear. Um, so that alone can also help treat fungal infection, but this patient has been suffering from chronic ear infection, he's got granulation tissue, so I've written to the GP, it's best getting some proper fungal prescription ointment for the ear, and I've just requested another ENT referral. So just mopping up there, this is the final view, you can see the eardrum, you can see that granulation tissue, we've done a really good, good job at clearing that. So this is the patient's left ear, so the patient has got otitis externa here, so it does report a lot of dryness, itchiness, but the ear canal is not as inflamed. Uh, there's not really any infected debris per se, this is more dead skin, um, soft skin, so we're just hovering over this. And you can see the ear canal is a lot wider, the eardrum in the moment when it comes in view. It's nice and healthy, but you can see all the dry skin flakes near the entrance. And we're just trying to peel away, just like the right side, as much dead skin as we can off the ear canal wall. Uh, if you're in the UK guys and you've got a blocked ear, uh, please do visit our website. I'm so bad at advertising Clearwax and I've got a link at the top, but I've had this URL on my videos for a while and I don't think I get probably a bit carried away talking about the procedure and other stuff. But um, yeah, if you do, if you have got a blocked ear and you're in the UK, please do visit our website www.clearwax.co.uk. URL's top right of the screen. You can enter your postcode, uh, your town or city, and find your nearest Clearwax specialist. You can visit their profile, you can look at their opening times, their contact details, you can give them a call or send them an email. Um, some of them have uploaded a biography. They also list all the various types of treatments they offer. Some may also um, provide additional services. Uh, many of our specialists are audiologists or hearing aid dispensers, so they they, they can, within their profile, um, advertise additional services they provide, such as musicians' earplugs, swim plugs, hearing aids, hearing tests, etc., etc. And some may also have links to some videos that they uploaded, so you can view some of those on their profile. Um, if you're an ear care specialist, we've had so much interest around the world um, uh, the last couple of weeks from Canada to New Zealand to Switzerland to South Africa, um, from, I think it's, I don't know if I said New Zealand already, Australia. Um, hopefully once the pandemic's over, we're going to really push clear wax. I think it's something that really now we need to make it global and get more and more specialists using the endoscope because the benefits are, well, uh, just there clearly to see for everyone who watches my videos and also other people's videos on YouTube. Reese Barber, Connor Balland, uh, Bridget Harley, uh, Lucinda Ellis, I should give a shout out to her, she puts loads of videos on Instagram I believe. And there's so many of our uh, delegates that we've trained, so all these people who have come on our Clearwax course, they, they are slowly but surely uploading videos just like myself. So yeah, if you are an ear care specialist and you want to get trained in endoscopic ear care, please do drop us an email on info at clearwax.co.uk. Yep, that's correct. So info at clearwax.co.uk. Or visit our website again, and we've got a training link where you can learn a lot more about the training we offer. So just using a fine end tip, just mopping up now and on the anterior canal wall, me, uh, laterally, so laterally means near the entrance. You can just see a few hair strands there, so that's a good indicator that we're near the entrance. And anterior means to the front. So because this is the patient's left ear, anterior means um, towards the nose in this case, as opposed to posterior, which is to the back of the head, so to the front of the face. And this is the anterior portion of this patient's left ear canal is, uh, is to the left-hand side of, of screen. If we were in the right ear, anterior would mean on the right-hand side. So we've just got some, again, some dead skin at the base of the ear canal with otitis externa, uh, as you probably know if you've been watching my videos, to try and remove as much dead skin as possible. When I first um, got trained in ear wax removal, probably six, 
six, seven years ago, um, I probably wouldn't have, I would have left, finished the procedure a lot more because our main objective is to help the patient hear again. And we did that a long time ago in both ears. Because I've become a lot more experienced, uh, I also want to help prevent uh, uh, the ear getting reinfected and help their current infection. So I'm just doing a bit more. But again, I'm using a fine end, so we don't, the fine end's a lot, lot quieter in the ear. With a zonal suction probe, it is quite noisy. You don't want to have prolonged exposure wherever possible if it's not required in the ear. So, um, and there's the patient's ear. It's slightly retracted. You can see the, the, the lateral process of the uh, malleus, so the, the, the hammer bone itself has got different aspects, different, uh, different anatomy, the, the, the bone itself has got its own anatomy. And what we mean by the lateral process is the top part of the hammer bone, you'll see like a, almost like, a, if you think about it like a ball and socket joint, you'll see the top part of the hammer bone when we re-enter and get a close-up to the eardrum. It's like a pointed ball end at the top near 12 o'clock. That's quite prominent in this patient's um, ear which suggests that the eardrum itself is sucked in, it's retracted, it's wrapped around that top of the hammer bone. Um, so it's got a bit of eustachian tube dysfunction. So you can see that top part, you can see it's pointed out a bit. So I hope you enjoyed that video guys. Um, hope you're having a nice evening uh, and I shall speak to you all soon. Take care, bye.